G'day, I'm Bob from Paradise and uh, today we're going to look at our um, new quarantine structure for international, bringing in international plants from Australia and we're going to tell you how to bring plants into Australia. It's not all that easy actually, but anyway. <laughs> so, um, this is, so this is our new facility, biosecurity area. Now we're going to show you in here but we don't, these are our Australian plants in here at the moment. We don't have any quarantine plants coming in. Um, we'll have some coming in in the next few months and uh, when you bring them in there can't be any other plants in the facility. So the first thing you do, so we don't actually have to do this at the moment but I'll just show you. So you scrape off all the mud off your boots like, like that. Normally we'd have that with water. We've got a special little enclave area here and we have disinfectant in here. So we walk through here and through the disinfectant and we come inside to our ship. This is a quarantine igloo. Okay. We've got a visitor here from Kenilworth today, <laughs> Lucinda. Come in, Lucinda. And so we'll, we'll just walk along. Okay, so the first, first thing to notice is this is solar weed, this material that it's built out of, and it's a double skin. There's two skins on here to insulate the, uh, the shed. So um, that keeps it cooler when it's hot and warmer when it's cold. Okay, so at the moment these are our plants, mostly cuttings of different, uh, different types of plants. We've got Lumnias there, Anthuriums, not that Anthuriums grow from Lumnias, they're, they're grown from division. We've got um, Hoya cuttings here, some uh, palms, they're not done from cuttings, but they're having an igloo like this that um, stays very warm in the winter. So when we bring plants in, from uh, North Queensland and places like that, they appreciate the extra warmth. So, here's the Met Millers. We come right down here, and you can see, remember I said we, this was a double skin, so it's inflated by this tiny little flan fan here. Can you get that, Shannon? Yep. Just come up and show that. See that tiny little fan? That just goes non stop and inflates the two skins. So, it's always air in between the two. But, so, the whole thing's airtight and the floor is um, completely sealed. Right? So it's a completely contained environment. In winter, we have, because there's so much moisture in here, we only have to water once every two or three weeks, something like that. So, we come around here, different, different cuttings. This is a little success story, this medium is called Technion. Just go in there, we, didn't, we just um, took a chance on those little cuttings and look at them coming away. The uh, leaf cuttings all failed. These ones here, or most of them failing, but these ones are a success so far anyway. So we'll see how we go there. So, we also um, do seeds in here, and you can see some Moringa um, coming up there. Here's some um, Imperium Dacii coming up. If you, if you look up along the roof there, you can see that we've got um, lights that we use in winter. We have them on for about five hours. Um, we extend the day and extend the, the uh, morning. So, and these lights, they're um, LED lights, so they're pretty good on electricity, although I haven't got the first bill yet. <laughs> but um, they're also quite warm, but they're not hot compared with fluorescent and other types of lights. But it is, they still do throw out a lot of warmth. So it stays very warm in here over winter. Um, and so in the summer, we'll gradually we'll turn them some of them leave them for a few months. So we come along here. So we've, these are all um, hoya cuttings that we've done. Yeah, we've got these, uh, weed cure. these are kimonies that haven't come up yet. So most of these will be moved out. As soon as we bring out our first overseas um, plants, hopefully that'll be our next um, in three, four weeks time. Um, we'll be bringing in some grafted adeniums and we'll be bringing in some jujube fruit trees. And uh, that'll be pretty exciting. So all these plants will have to be moved out for those plants here. Now, we, here's a little uh, Florida ghost there. If, um, I'll just, uh, Dylan, can you pass that? Just out? Yeah. Now, if you're bringing in plants from overseas, you know, here's a little checklist I just jotted out. So I'm not gonna hold it there for very long, but you might be able to pause it later and, and just read it. But I'll, I'll just tell you what you've got to do to bring plants in from overseas. So, so we've got eight steps. So I'll just 
keep that. You need to just hold that up and I'll just make sure I. Yeah, left it. <laughs> Wait a sec. Yeah, I'll have to put it there. I just don't want to miss a step, that's all. So, first thing to do, if you're bringing plants in overseas, you've got to check the bike on this V I C O N. That's the Commonwealth Department of Agriculture and see if it's permitted to bring it into Australia. Now, if it's not on the list, you might still be able to get it approved, but it can take up to 12 months to get an approval for a plant, so which we found out suddenly when we wanted to bring in some philodendrons that aren't in Australia, so we've got a 12 month wait <laughs> for the first ones we wanted to bring in. So anyway, so the first thing you check this uh, bicon list and see if it's allowed, and, uh, and then it'll tell you what conditions are required um, for the, uh, um, to bring the plant in. So that's the next step is to get an import permit. You can't just bring plants in from overseas. You must have an import permit um, to bring it in and it must be an allowed species. So you might see um, plants from Thailand or somewhere advertised completely uh, false. They shouldn't be advertising and, and for people to think you can just bring a plant in from overseas because it's very dangerous um, to our agricultural community, not only that, to, to all our natural ecosystems to bring plants in in case they've got some sort of disease. So you've got to do it right, you've got to do it legally. There's some people who try and get away with doing it illegally, but they won't be doing it for long. So you've got to get an import permit, and when um, you've got the import permit, you send that to the exporter, and, and uh, when, so they're a plant that's approved, they'll look at the import permit and they'll have conditions on it. So they'll inspect the plants according to that import permit that'll say inspected for for white fly or some some other whatever the going disease is coming from that country they'll ins and they'll inspect it and they'll declare free of that and it's and whatever else it might say you know on that import permit that's the idea of the import permit so it's, you've got to have a phytosanitary certificate um, done not all countries and will do it and um, but most these days um, can prepare phytosanitary certificates for you. So, the next thing is to um, air freight it to Australia and arrange a forwarder because there's a lot of things that have got to happen, have, happen to your plant or plants when they arrive in Australia and if a forwarder can do this, the first thing that will almost certainly be prescribed that the plant will have to be methyl bromide when it, on arrival. So it's got to go to a special place that does this under pressure and you can do the forwarder's job yourself, but you'll be messing around for an awful long time. So the forwarder will take the uh, the um, plants to the methyl bromide station, get it methyl bromided, bring it bring it back, and then arrange for an inspection by the Department of Agriculture. And the Department of Agriculture um, will inspect the plants. Now, this is this is a quite risky because if it's a black spot or any any fungus on your uh, plants or any insects that can be thrown out immediately could be re-exported or destroyed on the spot. Now we've had, well, I've had three um, imports into Australia and lost all the plants twice, all right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's very risky. Um, one, one lot was, um, had to be destroyed because there was some fun fungus, a uh, few black spots on the plants and another lot um, died in quarantine, the, the uh, quarantine the government quarantine people um, didn't look after them. I guess <laughs> they all, a thousand plants died. <laughs> so so it's quite it's quite risky. So um, only mad people um, attempt it. Um, no money too. So what have we got? So you've got the forwarder takes them to Metal Bramwood. The forwarder then takes them to the uh, Commonwealth Department of Agriculture. Because we're dealing with the Commonwealth here, not the State Department. This is all to do with the Commonwealth. It's got nothing to do with it. The state. Okay, and um, so they're methyl bromide, they're inspected, cleared hopefully, no problems, and then the forwarder will take the plants for you, you'll put them on a truck or wherever, under bond, and it'll go to a plant quarantine station for three months, nearly always. Um, um, tissue culture is different, but, but most of the time it'll be three months in quarantine into a structure like this. So the government does uh, run one at Mickleham, most of the state ones are closed. Um, there's one in Victoria and there's several private ones around. Um, we don't do other people's plants, it's too um, risky to be handling other people's plants um, in, this, in this sort of um, this environment. So 
Um, so they'll go into quarantine for three months, and as I said, we do not do that for, for other people. The, our quarantine uh, igloo has been set up for our own plants only. Um, so in, so they'll, they'll stay in, um, in quarantine for three months. They'll be inspected by the Department of Agriculture at least twice in that process. Um, and uh, finally, after three months, they, they uh, might be cleared if everything goes well. Should be cleared, hopefully. <laughs> and, um, and then they'll be um, forwarded onto you. So it's quite a, quite a lengthy process. I think I've covered it all. Um, yep, covered, covered it all. Don't think I missed any steps. And so it's, it's quite a process and a very expensive process too. So usually it's only worthwhile doing if you're doing it in quite large numbers. Like if I was to bring in 10 plants, I'd be wasting this facility because it's the 10 plants here. Uh, so, um, I think that, that pretty well covers our, our, uh, what we're doing here. Um, if you've got any questions, please go to the government site <laughs> on Blackon, don't ask me <laughs> Cause, because there's a, there's a whole, I'm not an expert on it, um, we're just feeling our way and uh, just, but you can go to Bicon, B-I-C-O-N and there's a lot of information on the government site. Okay, thank you for now and we'll catch you in three weeks time and don't forget if you like this click, um, what do you click below? Some, uh, click like on something or below and, and subscribe <laughs> and go to our website www.rareplants.net.au Thanks a lot. Catch you later. Bye.